All right, here's part two of my tutorial on the reflexive, symmetric, and transitive properties. In part one, I talked about these properties kind of abstractly, how the reflexive property means you need an arrow to itself, and the symmetric means you need arrows back, and the transitive property means this idea of shortcuts that I talked about. Uh, if you just need general help on reflexive, symmetric, and transitive, watch that video. That'll get you there. If you watch that video and you're like, I kind of get it, but I could use a couple more concrete examples, well, you're in the right spot. So what I have here are a couple more examples. I'm going to do some examples where the set that these relations are on are the set of real numbers. So what I mean here is in my first example, I had this abstract set that contained the elements A, B, C, and D. And my relation was on that set, meaning from that set to itself. What I'm going to do down here is instead of having A, B, C, and D as my elements, any real number could be in my element. So I have this set here, and it's huge. It's infinitely large, and there's tons of numbers in here, like 1, 2, uh, 3.1, negative 17, pi, all sorts of crazy stuff, right? Dot, dot, dot. That's my set. And then I have that exact same set over here. Uh, I don't know. Same. Sure. And there's a bunch of arrows here. And what I'm going to do is not actually draw the arrows. Because I have infinitely many elements, I can't draw all the different arrows. There'd be infinitely many. I'm just going to describe the arrows over here. And with this description, what we're going to do is decide whether this relation would be reflexive, symmetric, and, tr and or transitive. So the first one is this idea greater than. So what I mean is I draw an arrow from this set to this set. Maybe I should actually fill out this set so I have some examples. Let's make these in green. 1, 2, 3.1, negative 17, pi, and then there's a bunch more. And I'm not going to draw all the arrows, but I'll draw some. So for greater than, I would have an arrow from a number to a different number if that first number is greater than that second number. So what I'm saying is there would be a relate, an arrow from here to here. Why would there be an arrow from there to there? Because 2 is greater than 1. So there's an arrow from 2 to 1. There's also an arrow from 3.1 to 1 and from 3.1 to 2 because 3.1 is greater than 1, and 3.1 is greater than 2. So there's an arrow from any element to another element if the first element is greater than the second element. So there's not an arrow from 1 to 2, for example, because 1 is not greater than 2. Anyways, is that thing going to be reflexive, symmetric, and transitive, and or transitive? Well, let's start with reflexive. For reflexive, for any element, you need an arrow to itself. So let's see, should there be an arrow from 1 to 1? Nah. Why? Because 1 is not greater than 1. 1 is equal to 1, but 1 is not greater than 1. There's not an arrow from 1 to 1 because it would not be a true statement if I wrote 1 greater than sign 1. Uh, this is not reflexive because there is no arrow. How about using my same notation? Because there is not an arrow from 1 to 1. Nor is there an arrow from 2 to 2, or 3.1 to 3.1, or negative 17 to negative 17, or pi to pi, or any other real number to itself. Had to pause that for a minute because I had a phone call. I think I left off saying, or hopefully convincing you, that this relation greater than would not be reflexive. Because there exists at least one element for which there is not an arrow from that element to itself. In fact, in this case, there is every single element does not have an arrow to itself. I don't, that's a stronger condition than I need. It's called anti-reflexive. But this relation is certainly not reflexive because there is certainly not an arrow from every element to itself. For example, there's not an arrow from 1 to 1. What about symmetric? Uh, well, I guess we got to remind ourselves what symmetric was. Let's see if I can scroll up here. All right, that's that arrow's back thing. right? So if there's an arrow from A to C, for example, there must be an arrow from C back to A. Okay, so what do I have here? I have an arrow from 2 to 1. So therefore, there must be an arrow from 1 to 2. Is there? Is there an arrow from 1 to 2? I mean, I didn't draw in all the arrows here, so you can't say, well, I don't see one. But think about it. Should there be an arrow from 1 to 2? Well, would it be a true statement if I wrote 1 is greater than 2? No, hell no. If 2 is greater than 1, then 1 can't possibly be greater than 2. This relation here is not symmetric. Why? Because there's some arrow that is there, 2, 1, for example. Um, but there is not an arrow. 
Uh, instead of but not, I think I've been writing it this way, but there's not an arrow from one to two. So it's not symmetric. What about transitive? That's the hard one. That one's really hard. Uh, it turns out this is transitive. A lot of people struggle with that. Why is it transitive? Because you cannot show me that it's not transitive. And if it's not not transitive, then it's transitive. Okay, that's a weak argument. You don't like that, huh? All right, I can do better than that. If I have some element, let's say A, and that element is greater than some el other element, we'll call it B, and then I have some other element, C, for which B is greater than C. So I have this chain from A to B to C. Then the question becomes, should there be an arrow from A to C? Well, if A is bigger than B and B is bigger than C, then A must be greater than C, right? This is me. This is my wife. This is my kid. I weigh more than my wife and my wife weighs more than my kid. Therefore, I must weigh more than my kid, right? How could my kid weigh more than me if my wife weighs more than my kid and I weigh more than my wife? That doesn't make any sense, right? If there's an arrow from A to B and there's an arrow from B to C, there must be an arrow from A to C. Uh, so this relation is transitive, right? If I have an arrow from 3.1 to 2 and I have an arrow from 2 to 1, then there must be an arrow from 3.1 to 1. There is. 3.1 is greater than 1. This relationship is transitive. Uh, maybe a little bit quicker. What about less than or equal to? Is that going to be reflexive? Yep. Whoa. Try that again. This is reflexive. Why is this reflexive? Because of the or equal to part. Less than or equal to means there is an arrow from pi to, uh, no, I guess, how about negative 17 to pi? Sure, because negative 17 is less than pi. There's also an arrow from negative 17 to negative 17 because negative 17 is less than or equal to negative 17, right? This here is a true statement. So therefore, there's an arrow from negative 17 to negative 17. And that's true for any element, not just negative 17. There's an arrow from 1 to 1, because 1 is less than or equal to 1. There's an arrow from 2 to 2, because 2 is less than or equal to 2, etc. This relationship is reflexive. What about symmetric? I shouldn't write the word symmetric before we decide whether it is or not symmetric. Uh, symmetric, that's the arrows back idea. Is this relationship symmetric? Think about it. It's not. Spoiler alert. It's not symmetric. Why is it not symmetric? Well, I have an arrow from, let's see, negative 17 to pi because negative 17 is less than or equal to pi. So there is an arrow from here to here. Then the question is, is there an arrow from pi back up to negative 17? Hell no. If I wrote pi less than or equal to negative 17, you'd think I was crazy. Pi is not less than or equal to negative 17. Pi is like 3. 3 is not less than negative 17. 3 is bigger than negative 17. It's better to have $3 than to owe negative 17, or to owe 17. Anyways, uh, this relationship is not symmetric, I don't know, because there is an arrow, sorry, that looks weird, because there is, what did I say, less than or equal to, so there's an arrow from 1 to 2, but there is not an arrow from 2 to 1. 1 is less than or equal to 2, 2 is not less than or equal to 1. What about transitive? Turns out it is transitive. Uh, and the argument for why this is transitive is kind of the same argument for why this is transitive, right? If A is less than or equal to B and B is less than or equal to C, then A must be less than or equal to C. If, uh, I don't know, my brother makes more, if I make less than or the same amount of money as my brother and my sister, or my brother makes less than or equal to the same amount of money as my sister, then it must be the case that I make less than or equal to the amount of money as my sister. That was a stupid example, but maybe you follow that a little bit. This is reflexive, it's not symmetric, it is transitive. What about equals? Equals is a weird one. So for equals, I got a bunch of numbers over here. One, two, three, pi, whatever. And a bunch of numbers over here. And my arrows, I only draw an arrow from an element here to an element here if the elements are equal. So there's an arrow from 1 to 1, because 1 is equal to 1, but there's not an arrow from 1 to 2, because if I wrote 1 equals 2, you'd think I was stupid or crazy or something. There's an arrow from 2 to 2, because 2 equals 2. There's an arrow from 3 to 3, because 3 equals 3. There's an arrow from pi to pi, because pi equals pi. But there's no arrow from pi to 3, because pi does not equal 3. It is reflexive, kind of obviously. 
because um, it's narrow from every element to itself, because every element equals itself. It's not symmetric. No, it is symmetric. Sorry. Slow down. And you're like, wait a minute, how could it possibly be symmetric? Well, think about what it means to be symmetric. For any element, there must be a partner element back. Can you come up with an example where there is an arrow for which there is not a partner error? This arrow from 1 to 1 means there must also be an arrow from 1 to 1. Well, there is from 1 to 1. If there is an arrow from 1 to 2, then I'd need one from 2 to 1, but there's not an arrow from 1 to 2. So I don't need an arrow from 2 to 1. This relationship is symmetric, although that tricks people a lot. It's also transitive. Um, when a relationship is reflexive, symmetric, and transitive, it's called an equivalence relation, FYI. Um, it is transitive, and you're like, how in the world is this transitive? Here's my answer. Show me why it's not. Right? Come up with a chain for which there is not a shortcut. But you can't do it. Why can you not do it? Why can you not come up with a chain for which there is not a shortcut? Because you can't come up with a chain in the first place. Right? Your chains are all going to be really trivial because your arrows only go from an element to itself. So you're like, I got an arrow from 1 to 1, and I also got an arrow from 1 to 1, so I need an arrow from 1 to 1. Right? You can't, you're never leaving this element. You're not going from 1 to 2 or from 2 to 3. So it's transitive kind of trivially. It's transitive because you cannot show me that it is not transitive. Finally, last example, does not equal. So if I've been color coding, nope. These aren't color coordinated, so I'm not even going to worry about it. Got some elements over here. I'll use these same examples, although it does not matter. And now the way I'm going to draw the arrows is I'm going to draw an arrow from an element to another element if those two elements are not equal. That's different. So I'm not going to draw an arrow from 1 to 1 because 1 does not not equal 1. I will draw an arrow from 1 to 2 because 1 does not equal 2. And from 1 to 3. And from 1 to pi. And to be clear, this isn't my whole, I should put like dot, dot, dot here because this isn't my whole set. My set contains all real numbers, not just at these few examples. This is just supposed to give you an idea of what the arrow diagram would look like. What about from 2? I want an arrow from 2 to 1 because 2 does not equal 1. I do not want an arrow from 2 to 2 because it is not true that 2 does not equal 2. How's that for confusing? I do want one from 2 to 3 and from 2 to pi and from 2 to every other element in the world except for 2. Same with 3. These are starting to get kind of messy. Same with pi. I want pi going everywhere except for 2 pi. Because something like this. Reflexive symmetric transitive. Is it reflexive? Hell no. Why is it not reflexive? Because there is not an arrow from 1 to 1. Nor is there an arrow from 2 to 2, nor from 3 to 3, nor from pi to pi. It's anti-reflexive, but you don't need all that. You just need one example, one missing arrow. And there's an arrow missing from 1 to 1, so it's not reflexive. Is it symmetric? Hell yeah, it is. It is symmetric. Why is it symmetric? Because if I have an arrow, that means the two elements are not equal to each other. If I have an arrow from 1 to 2, it's because 1 does not equal 2. And if there's an arrow from 1 to 2, there must be an arrow from 2 to 1. Because if A does not equal B, then B does not equal A. So it's symmetric. What about transitive? This one's really tricky. Think about this for a while. I shouldn't write it here because I haven't told you the answer yet. Uh, probably the hardest thing on this whole example is whether or not this is transitive. I bet if you are learning this in a class and you have a teacher that's kind of trying to give you a test on this kind of stuff, you will see this exact example. It's a classic example of a really tricky one that really tests whether you know transitive. Because you look at this and you're like, yeah, it kind of feels transitive, right? Um, let's see. Let's try it out. I got an arrow from 1 to 2, right? Because 1 doesn't equal 2. And I got an arrow from 2 to, I don't know, 3. Sure. Because 2 doesn't equal 3. So then I need an arrow from 1 to 3. And yeah, I got one. All right, 1 doesn't equal 3. So that looks good. But remember, one example is not enough to prove that it's transitive. It has to be transitive for all possibilities. So the way I think about transitive is don't try to prove that it is transitive. Try to prove that it's not transitive and see if you fail. So can I prove this is not transitive? Can I find any example, any chain like this, so that I start somewhere, go somewhere else, start at that somewhere else, and go somewhere else, and for which there is not an arrow from the first one to the last one? Well, think about what arrows you're missing here. The only arrows that are missing are arrows from an element to itself. Ah, so what if I thought about 
I have an arrow from 1 to 2 because 1 doesn't equal 2. And I have an arrow from 2 to 1 because 2 does not equal 1. And then I ask you the question, is there an arrow from 1 to 1? And you respond, hell no, there's not an arrow from 1 to 1. Because there's only arrows if the element does not equal, those elements don't equal each other. So 1 does not equal 2, and 2 does not equal 1. So that gives me this first arrow and this second arrow. Uh, however, 1 does equal 1. There is not an arrow from 1 to 1. This is not transitive. And if you ask me why, I'd say because I have an arrow from 1 to 2, for example, and an arrow from 2 to 1, but I do not have an arrow from 1 to 1. And all it takes is one counterexample to break transitivity. And so even though there's a shortcut from 1 to 3, I have this 1 to 2, 2 to 3 chain, and there's a shortcut from 1 to 3, that's great. Doesn't mean it's transitive. That's just one example. In order to be transitive, it has to be true for all examples. And here's a counterexample. So there's a little bit on reflexive, symmetric, and transitive. Hopefully that clears up some misconceptions, and hopefully that'll get people to stop writing uh, dissatisfied comments on a video that I made that wasn't even for you. It was for my students in the first place. <laughs> All right.